Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So, so, so what we're talking about, uh, uh, vision was talking about division in the church. I'm, I'm going to get to that. But I want to send that Brother Addison and I were covering, uh, and, and Elder Johnson. Elder Johnson and I covered it last Sunday. And then Brother Addison covered it uh, Thursday. Uh, and we we're trying to reflect the fact of how the church is supposed to, to be responding in this day and time, even in the midst of the different politics, what our role is supposed to be. And why we need to be able to recognize when things are not doing it God's way. We're talking about the taming of the tongue before you came in. I don't know. I don't think you came in. We're talking about the taming of the tongue. That was Brother uh, uh, Jackson read about the the tongue and, and what comes out of our mouth. I, I like that old saying with uh, I think it's Chris Rock or whatever that said. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I remember and, that. And, and, and do you need to check the what's coming out of our mouth. Is it coming out of our mouth with the spirit or is it coming out of our mouth based on the flesh? Mm -hmm. And we're saying is that the, the church's responsibility is to learn to operate in the spirit. And one of the things is we operate under the fruit of the spirit, which is those characteristics. And Jimmy, I think you heard us, Jimmy, we're talking about like, if somebody takes a test on what the fruits are, right? <laughs> And, and and now we realize we can't be six. We said six, you get a seventy, but <laughs> you know. oh, a six, 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 seven. <laughs> and, and you can't get you should leave no seven out of nine. Yeah. Hey, I got a I got a question. If y'all don't mind me jumping in right quick, something that the elder mentioned uh, a little while ago about learning um, to to be, to walk in the flesh and learning to. Yeah. Um, excuse me, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and learning to uh, that th that our psyche is not, you know, like obviously that of God's, and we we know that. I say that academically, right? But uh, spiritual too, because you remember you said in Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways right. are not your ways, huh? Right, right, <laughs> right. So, so what I want to ask, you, what I want, want you guys to kind of help me with, as far as understanding, because you know I have this, you know, I'm, a, I'm, 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 we all have this battle. I know I'm not the only one, <laughs> but you know, when you're going through it, you sometimes you feel like you're the only one. Yeah. So, what about the attitude of of the believer, right? So the thing is, is we know that, um, uh, you know, we we can recognize when things when we're doing good, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, we don't even when we're doing it because of envying, because of, of the, the strife, because of the the, the the dynamics that are going on within us. You know, um, sometimes even I don't feel like I'm not at peace at the moment, yeah. even though I may be doing the right things. That makes sense? Right, right, okay. right, right. And um, so I, I, I'm just throwing that out there for kind of discussion because, and I guess it, it's going back to, because when Elder said it's a learned thing, and I, I think for me, uh, it's it's a, a learned thing, you know, because sometimes I feel I'm, I feel great, yeah. You know, don't, you know but I, I also notice that sometimes it's like, hey, I, you know, it's the the, the the me mentality. Hey, I'm doing, you know, so I'm I'm doing this so that I can show worshiping to God the Father. And then there are times when it's like, you know what? Because this happened the other day. I was doing the right thing to kind of help this guy out. And then he, you know, asked for a little bit more assistance, a little bit more assistance. And I was like, you know what, man, I feel like I'm being played here. You know, that kind of thing. That's what, that was my psyche, right? And, but, but it was evident right in front of my eyes that he needed help. It wasn't, it's just that I think instead of him just saying, look, I need this, 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 and this, you know, he didn't want to throw it all on me all at once. So as he was, I felt like he was milking it, right. <laughs> you know, once yeah. he got one thing, he was going to the next thing. And, and he is truthfully, he needed it all. So I didn't have, I didn't, in and of itself, fellas, I didn't have a problem helping him out. But you know, you, you, can you understand what I'm saying? What was going on inside? Yeah. You know? And so I guess I'm asking for some guidance, if you will, uh, as we go and we, we're doing this spiritual walk that, 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 you know, maybe, hey, it don't necessarily always feel comfortable uh, when we're doing what we're doing. But it is yet and still the right thing to do, and I guess the spirit, you know, and how God talks to us, and how He, how we're, it, 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 we grow, and how we're developed comes comes later. 
Uh, you know, and I realize I'm rambling here, but but maybe if somebody can kind of help out uh, with that, because, uh, yeah, I, I, I tell you, because it's, it's starting to happen more and more. And uh, uh, and I don't I, I again, I, I try to say that I don't mind it, but I realize maybe it's just that that sin nature in me or that flesh in me that tries to tries to get in the way of what the spirit is trying to do. Well, does does is affliction and persecution supposed to feel good? <laughs> well, well, right, right. Okay. Uh -huh. So I mean, it's it's the the only joy in it is, I guess, is is going through it. Okay. You know, and then on the other end, you're reflecting and you you accomplish what this guy did. And so there is fruit in that. Amen. You know, I, I just think that uh, it's not like Satan ain't there. He's he's always there. If he was there with Christ all the time, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that he's not going to be uh, with, with, you know, warring around us. And uh, this flesh, man, is 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 something. It's 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 with us. It is there's, there's no time. It's not with us until we leave it here and go on. Amen. You know what I mean? So, in in my mind, I I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, there is times where I just feel this weight. Yes. On me, and I'm talking about physical. Right. And it's like a ringing in my ears almost trying to get past something and stay in the spirit. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's something. It's a lot of pressure. And, and and I'm not comparing myself with Christ, but I understand when that brother was sweating blood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You trying to, to, to achieve what God desired of him. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, I think that one of the things is I think his situation is talking about for all of us is how far do we go uh, as far as helping people out? Go ahead, Sarah. Go ahead, sir. I'll repeat what you said earlier that caused me to, to shudder. If I'm in the same place as I was, mm. did I sacrifice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah. And okay. sacrifice will give you joy as you go through it because you've given your resources, your time, your mentality and your resources and all of that. And that challenged me more than, did I sacrifice meathead? I'm only talking to one person. Yeah, yeah. You know, did I meet? Yeah. M-E-E-T. -E yes, okay. sir. Hey. Did I meet? Did I meet? Yeah, yes, not carnal, <laughs> not carne. Did I sacrifice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, was, I was wondering, though. Amen. I appreciate like, that, I'm brother. Sorry. I'm sorry to be so vocal. No, that's good. That's good. No, no. I appreciate that, brother. I wanted I wanted to throw this out here, brother uh, Jackson. When we're talking about the fruit, of uh, the, uh, the characteristics of the fruit, one of yeah. the things is, and that's just, I was just looking at your situation, which you was talking about. I put up here on um, the scriptures, the, the fruit, right? And uh, Galatians uh, five, and I uh, look at that meekness, and and you see what you see what meekness is saying there. It says uh, humility, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and and humility to me, and and, and Jim, I want you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Humility is saying, I can only help you for so far. You know, like you know, with a brother, because that's the scenario he's bringing up. He's trying to help somebody out, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. and and, you, and there's a point where your you, I think somewhere your spirit was trying to say or flesh is saying I can't you 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 pulling too much from me now you you asking more you going over what I feel I can give you mm -hmm. and I think in the spirit of meekness it is say uh, I I wish I could help you more I, I really can't I, mm -hmm. I, I if I can get you to a certain place and then you can pick up from there. You know, I, that's the best I can do for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not obligated to go beyond what my capabilities are. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. If I, don't, if I don't have, I have other people I got to help. I got a family. I got 
I got a job. I got, right, Jimmy? I mean, it's, it's humility. And that's why I'm thinking the spirit of meekness is to be able to say no when I need to say no. Mm -hmm. where, where does long suffering <laughs> fit into that? Well, <laughs> let me, that, Jim? Let me chime in for, let me just chime in. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. You remember the scripture that says, if they ask you to go in one mile, go in twain. Right. Mm -hmm. They take you to the law and sue you for your cloak, give me a coat also. Mm -hmm. So it's like us going beyond the, <clears throat> beyond our limitations is established as a norm in the Sermon on the Mount. The question becomes for me, you know, and, I, and this is something I deal with daily, is am I being led to God's spirit? Is this something that I've extrapolated from what I've read? Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I think that there is a there is a difference in reading the scriptures and following the scriptures and listening to the voice of God and following God. Yes, sir. I truly believe that that is the reality. And, uh, and it's one that, when I say it's, a, it's for me, it's a learned behavior. I can read scripture and say, well, they asked me for this, so I'm going to give it to them. Is that what God's saying? Come on now. You see what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, such, it's such a thin line for me. It's, it's such a, because I've done it. I've I, I read the Bible. They should lay hands on the sick and they share a cover. Okay, Pastor Taylor, you know, this one already. <laughs> so I'm thinking I need to go out and lay hands on everybody and, and, and heal them. You know what I said? That's my part because I read it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But then working with P. Lee <laughs> over these many 27 years, I come to realize that maybe I better listen for the voice of God that tells me to go into the room and lay hands on the person. Amen. 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 I read the book and tried to follow the book. Amen. Jesus is our example, right? Jesus is our example. And yeah. I know Brother Isaac said when he said one scripture he healed them all. But yeah. I also know in the scripture an example when he went to that pool of Bethesda and that young that man that was lame for so many years, right? But there were a whole bunch of people jumping in the pool. I, I, I didn't see when Jesus went and you know killed all those around that pool. I only saw Jesus going to address that one man. At least the scripture was saying is the man that was sick for a very long time. And, and I think that's the detail that we're working with with this God that we serve. Right. The God that we serve knows whether or not that man needed healing right then because he's trying to save his immortal soul while we're trying to ease his, his, his cardinal comfort. I mean, you know, his cardinal suffering. So right. it's so important that we listen yeah. and pay attention to details. It's like, Lord, what do you want me to do right now with this situation? Can I tell this guy to back off and leave me alone? Is the devil that's driving him? And my lying a devil is just a brother that really needs to be witness to. And I can honestly say, uh, from time to time, I've not been able to tell the difference. Right. So I just I have to ask the question, like, Lord, what you want me to do? I mean, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of dealing with him right now. Right now, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go. <laughs> now, what do you, and I'm <laughs> rising. <laughs> You're going to see a lot. And like on the street, people just come and pick up you like you're a tree or something. You're like, hey, you got to die, you got to die, you got this. You're like, man, if I've done enough, dad, that's enough. Come on now. <laughs> I, I get, but it's just funny that Sam saying is that Jesus, when he was there and he went to Jerusalem, he went and obviously went into the temple different at different gates and so forth like that. And if you remember that time, Jimmy, remember that time when Peter and uh, I think John was going to, I guess the porch, I can't remember what it was, Porch of Solomon, one of those, one of those gates, and there's a blind man or lame man was yeah. there. And it said he he routinely sat there yeah. asking for alms. And, and, and there's no indication that to me that means Jesus must have passed by this guy maybe sometimes. So. It may have. But my point is that is when Peter and John came by and the man was looking for alms. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus, right? Rise and walk. My point is, I don't know if Jesus, I don't get the impression that Jesus went all the time with everybody that he ran in contact with. In my mind, those who had a desire uh -huh. to be healed. The faith, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, when, when, all I know is if I see somebody do something, then I know it can be done. Yes, that, sir. That brings forth yes, faith. Sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So especially in the masses, and 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 I heard someone says, if you wanna you want revival, heal somebody. 
hey. and let people see see that person be healed. Or, or actually have signs following. That's a better word. <laughs> have signs following, then yes, you, you will have biblical revival. Right. But you know, like in, in Pentecostal re revival. Right. <laughs> I remember, like we've been talking the last couple of weeks, it said he confirmed his words with signs. Yeah. He's the one yeah. confirming, right? So it's like that revival has to kind of be predicated by us listening to find out what his word is. Yeah. What word is he speaking? So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you 100% in that regard. It, it's just getting to that point where we're listening and hearing what his word is because I preached out in Auburn for years. I still don't know if that's his word. I don't think it was at that time. They really didn't. So what is the revival coming in at that? There are a lot of principles, a lot of things that I taught from the pulpit. There, as I grow in Christ, I begin to realize, like, hey, I don't think that's what he was saying. <laughs> you, you, you know, that's what he is saying. And so I've noticed that none of that, none of the signs and stuff was following the stuff I was doing because I hadn't hit that mark yet. You were confirming his word. You were confirming your Johnson, yeah. Yeah, something I had learned from somebody else. You know, it's like I had I had a lot of word going out there, but I don't know if it was the Lord, none of the word of God. It was what I had been taught by tradition, by the, the elders that taught me. And so a lot of things that we were doing never had any sign following because it wasn't his word. Go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, brother, um brother Jack, I would um uh, I would admonish you, kind of piggyback on what the elders said, and that uh, you have to really be, in my opinion, sensitive to the Spirit of God yes. and follow what the Spirit of God would have you to do. I know that I, I consider myself a, a generous person, and I know in most times I give, I, I, I'm excited about it, and it's something that I want to do. It's not like it's pulled out of me, like pulling teeth. It's something that I that I naturally give up, and I and I and I enjoy, and I get a piece about it. I would say this too, but sometimes we have to watch the scriptures. That's why I say you have to stay sensitive to the spirit of God, because I can take a look at Galatians 5, where we're talking about now the fruit of the spirit. Yes, and, and I can justify accepting anything, letting anything go in the church, different lifestyles, whatever. Because so I got to be patient, long suffering, gentle. I need to be meek. I need to have temperance and so on and so forth. But that's not what the Bible teaches, because there are there are guardrails. There are lines drawn in the sand. There are things that we just can't accept everything. So, so we just can't, we can justify a lot of things by the scriptures that we want to do, but that's not, I don't think that's the spirit of the word of God that's, that, that's being taught by us. That's why I think the elder also said earlier that uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not yes. unto your own understanding. And I think that's a lot of time come in because People can, or we can use the scripture, people can use the scripture to justify anything. Jesus Christ, I think, characterized or exemplified the fruit of the spirit better than anyone on earth. But I see times where he he were, he were, was against things and he stood against things and he drew lines in the sand and he called people snakes and he called people vipers and he threw people out. And then someone could say, well, he wasn't being gentle then, he wasn't being patient then, where's your long suffering? Where's your, where's your gentleness? You see, so all that can... So we have to be sensitive, in my opinion, to the Spirit of God. And 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 if I feel like I'm being used, then back up. There may be why I'm feeling like I'm being. Used. I need to and I need to go back to the Spirit of God and ask Him and try to be more sensitive. Is this something God that you would have me to do? Because I could be hurting this person by giving more. Like a lot of people spoil their children. Have they helped their children? You spray the rods, you spoil the child. Now they're saying, don't spank your children. Don't discipline them corporately. Is that? benefiting that child well now they got laws and stuff against and they'll say you're a bad parent and all so kind of stuff but that's contrary to the word of god Come and on. so I, I just think that for true true yeah. spirituality i think that if you if you yeah i think we just need to be led by the spirit of god for the most part and, Go ahead, Jim. and let me just say this last thing and i think that you're gonna get it wrong sometime you're gonna get it right sometime like riding a bicycle and i think over time you begin to discern when truly it was God and was it and when when it was you. But I definitely wouldn't grieve over if I if I made if I, I erred uh, in the wrong way. Sometimes I would learn from it. But I, I do think that um, that following the Spirit of God and and really being sensitive to His voice in those kind of situations is going to be better for you and the person involved. That's just my take on it.
And that's why I said meekness is that humility part. The humility part is I, I, I can go as far as I, I feel I can go, you know, mm -hmm. and not be able to, and I have a problem saying it. I, I, I brother, I, I wish, I, I hope you can go further. This is all I can do for you right now. I do got to shift and go somewhere else. You know what I mean? I, yes. I like the Good Samaritan. Let me let me get you to a place, right? Right, right. And, and then, then I tell the people to help on as much as you can, but I got to, you know, I don't want to stay in the lane that you can stay with. That's all I'm just saying. Well, I, and I appreciate that because, uh, you know, this, believe me, the, over the past five or 10 minutes that we've been talking about this, this actually really does help me understand what I was going through at the time. And, you know, obviously up until I asked the question, well, I was still kind of going, you know, you know, uh, feeling. And so uh, I appreciate everything that uh, everybody's contributed to, to, uh, to answering that question, because that really does help a lot. Tremendously. Amen. 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 And the one thing I was talking about, go ahead, Jim. Okay. The other piece I was saying is the point we want to do is practice. So when I said practice characteristic, you need to know when you're in the flesh, when you in the spirit. And if you go back to this James, and I want to show you this again, let you read it. Uh, I'm gonna pop it up here. Look at that and, and read that for us, Brother Jackson, if you don't mind. James chapter three, starting in verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Amen. Yes, sir. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory Amen. not and lie not against the truth. Come on now. This wisdom descendeth not from above, uh -huh. but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Yeah, and that, that hit me the last time that I, I read right. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, uh -huh. then peaceable, yes. gentle, uh -huh. and easy to be entreated. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Full of mercy and good fruit, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. partiality uh -huh. and without hypocrisy. Uh -huh. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. 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 And to me, it's like this. It's like how I sit there and communicate, even that scenario you was talking about. Uh -huh. is, uh, I, 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 this is as far as I can go. I, I appreciate, you know, I help you out. I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. I, I have to go now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But that, you know what, this also, just reading yeah. that last uh, bit of scripture there in James, it also uh, let me know where... Again, sometimes, you know, I'm doing something, uh, let's just say, right. I'm just going to just throw it out there in generalities, right? But where that corruption or that there was something wrong in me, uh -huh. right? And that's the reason why I was feeling the way that I was feeling. So, but this is good because what I want to do is when I'm doing what it is that I'm doing, I want to be at peace. Exactly. Be in the spirit. So yes, whatever it was, and then I know what I need to do is get into my word some yes, more so that I can let God work that. Because there was obviously something in me, okay, that was not right. That's why I wasn't at peace. Exactly. That situation. Does that right. make sense? Yes, sir. Because the peace of God ruled us. Was it, Jimmy, you read that scripture? Is, was it peace of God that mm -hmm. ruled you, right? If you let the peace of God, the umpire, mm -hmm. rules your heart, yeah. he mm -hmm. will tell you. Hey, if if you ain't getting no peace, that means okay, I'm out of my lane. I'm yeah, going yeah, yeah, out of yeah. my lane, right? And if mm -hmm. I'm not sharing the gospel, doing reproof in it, then maybe I need to check myself. But mm -hmm. what I want you though is you you know how some people help you out and start cursing you out. <laughs> you know, I mean they curse you out. Listen, you start cursing somebody out. You know you in the flesh. Right, <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, brother, brother Addison. Yeah. I always wanted. I wanted to go back to your golf analogy uh, as well, too, just for a tad bit. And 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 I and I do appreciate everything you said this morning. And and a lot of times people don't know the rules. And 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 there is a pace. However, let me go on the other side. If in fact them groups in front of you are uh, then left you for four or five holes, then it is incumbent upon you to allow you to pay through because you're playing slow play. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that front side needs to be considered as well as that back side. You know, when you decide. You know what I'm saying? Understood. Exactly. But people, exactly. the, but the the issue is never a foursome in front of us. Right. Right. It's always a twosome or a single in front of us. So naturally, there's going to be space. Right. Right. But behind right. us, there'll be twosome, 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 <laughs> and you got two and three groups on the tee box, right. and they all waiting to go, but they won't join each other. Okay, right. And two, I'll say that that's, that's, in my opinion, also an error on the governing body because yeah. they shouldn't allow that to be going out there like that because they're, they're actually embedding conflict in the round already. And, yeah. so, and then you're going to have the one deal with it, not them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It should be a pace in between from the beginning. Right, it should be. Or you at least got to have two, or you need to join up with them group to play or something. I mean, you know. That's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the other piece is, you ain't, I'm saying that you know when you're in the present, when you start talking, they, those words we're saying, dealing with strife, right? <laughs> in other words, if it ain't coming from above, you know where it's coming from. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm Amen. Sometimes you'll have balls coming from above from behind you. <laughs> from them telling you you need to move on. When you said love, joy, peace, I was thinking when you said that the first is peace with God. And, and I think that's one of the, the tales, and I think you just missed it a second ago, it's one of the tales to let you know that you are doing the right thing. Yes, sir. But a lot of times, people will not agree with, when you tell somebody no, a lot of times, the response is kind of negative. But <laughs> but when God gives you peace with that no, you have to move forward with that, because that's even a ministry to the person that you're dealing with. But sometimes people think that their craft and their 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 guile is the thing that's getting them their way. But when God says it's a cutoff, and you know it's time for you to cut it off, and you just look at them and say, no, I'm not going to do that. Lord, not leave me to go that way. Now they know who's in control of the situation. It ain't them, but right. it's God himself. So right. it's very important. That, has, that too has become for me a landmark or a milestone, what you call it, uh, an indicator as to whether I'm doing the right thing or not. When, I, when God says no, and I follow suit with that, and I still have peace in my heart, then you can die on the side of the curve. I ain't going to do nothing up for you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm through. At that point, I'm finished because if I go beyond that, now I'm sinning. <laughs> right. And you know, one, one thing I do want to add to and keep in mind too is that bearing fruit of the Spirit or the characteristics of the fruit is not to give indication of acceptance of any behavior. You see what I'm saying? It's not, you're not, he's not saying because I, I approach the situation through the characteristics of the fruit. It not mean I'm, I'm endorsing anything, you know? Like Jesus, like the woman caught in an act of adultery. Right. How did he handle that? And 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 did he did he endorse the lady activity? No, he told her to go and stand no more when he finished. That was the last comment to her. In other words, you see what I'm saying, Jimmy? He was, not, he was not saying what you're doing is right. But what I am saying is all of you knuckleheads around her you 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 are operating in a position of judging and condemning her for the very same that you should be condemning yourself for. You would I see and let them cast the first stone. Work on yourself. It doesn't mean I'm accept your behavior, but I also tell I'm not accepting my own behavior too. You have to work that. So I don't make sure it's not acceptance. It's just how you're. <laughs> <laughs>